So here I am reacting to the new announcement of Apple's MacBook Pro 13 inch, and we're gonna find out if it's good enough for music production. What is going on guys, DJ Ava Trap Tendo with Tech News here. So in this video, I'm going to cover a few things about the new MacBook Pro 13 inch. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the things that is good about this and some of the bad and interact and, and react. And also, I'm gonna give you my hot take. And I definitely wanna hear from you guys in the comments section and if you are excited about this new 13 inch, which is usually their annual refresh, because there are a lot of good things that I can say about it returning to the new Magic Keyboard and all that but i have a news article from music radar which will be linked in the description box so you can get the skinny on that while i talk about it and read it and also the hot take is what y'all are here for so let's go ahead and do this so the links in the description box if you want to read this article and it starts off like this apple's new 13 inch macbook pro might hit the sweet spot for music production will it i'm being dead serious too Updated machine gets the Magic Keyboard, double the storage as standard and faster performance. Well, that's good. Apple has unveiled a new version of its 13 inch MacBook Pro. And if you are looking for a Mac OS music making laptop, it could be a pretty compelling proposition. Uh, like the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, this sports Apple's latest Magic Keyboard, a big improvement on the typing surface that came before it, because it was a whole bunch of mess behind that, which offers one millimeter of key travel and physical escape key. That's really a thing in Apple world. Why? Oh, I remember they removed it for some weird reason. Well, it's back. You also get double the storage as a standard in comparison to previous 13 inch MacBook Pros from 256 gigabytes to one terabyte. Well, that's good, depending on which configuration that you go for. Well, the Cast 22. And you can push the capacity up to four gigabytes if you wish. What? That doesn't even make any sense. I, I don't know. That might be an error on uh, Music Radar. And then they got a couple of lists of stuff that they, you know, that the music radar doing music radar things. There's an option to spec a 10th generation quad core core i5 processor too, with turbo boost speeds up to 4.1 gigahertz, which has to make sense in the real world with throttling, of course, uh, in comparison to the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the dual core processor uh, performance is said to be 2.8 times faster, 80% faster graphics performance is also promised promise keyword promised other highlights include the option to spec up to 32 gigabytes of ram that's great all models come with at least eight gigs of ram as a standard not great and a retina display with true tone technology with prices starting at 1300 dollars or 1300 pounds the new 13 inch macbook pros look like a pretty good option for music makers being significantly cheaper than the 16 inch model and more powerful than the macbook air which starts at just 300 dollars or 300 pounds less now let's go to the apple website so here we are on apple's website right here so we can just dive in and see what it's really about gaming it says pro it says play graphic intensive games like Dota 2. <laughs> what? Dota 2 is a graphical intensive, I guess on Apple's, yes. I know I sound like an asshole right now, but come on, man. Apple, who are you fooling? But that is a competitive game, and most people may want to compete on their MacBook Pro. Just saying. So we have some real world specs here and they talk about performance, at least performance uh, when compared to their older processors or whatever. It says dual core MacBook Pro, which was their 13 inch right there. So it, it says that it's faster and that's good. So, I mean, again, if you're a Logic Pro X head, then you have a lot to expect and that's a really good thing. The one thing I wanna give Apple props on, and I mean, this, this whole touch, this whole touch bar right here, and you can see like them looking at a timeline, you can scrub with that. I think that's a good touch. Somebody that uses trackpads a lot and don't use a keyboard and a mouse all the time, I'm a trackpad head. I, I see this as a super positive and something that I would love to experience. Oh my gosh, because workflow is almost everything here. And then that beautiful trackpad. I ain't gonna lie, that trackpad is gorgeous and it just, it's huge, it's the right size, but I just want a numpad. 
All right, so if you were to buy the new 13 inch here, and if we were gonna look at the the lowest price, $1,300, this is what you're getting right here. You're getting a, a 1.4 gigahertz quad core eighth generation Intel Core i5 processor. Uh, that's thirteen. That's thirteen hundred dollars right there. So you're not getting a whole bunch uh, for your money, and that's expected. So what we're gonna look at is the real deal here. What you really would be spending if you want to compete with the other guys out there, and that is the 2.0 gigahertz quad core processors with turbo boost up to 3.8 gigahertz. And yeah, you're gonna start paying up to eighteen hundred dollars for that, and you'll get turbo boosting up to 3.8 gigahertz which doesn't matter if, if it's not in real world practice and that is for all laptops i'm not just being biased here uh you have intel iris plus graphics i don't know what that is i guess that's just the the gpu that's built inside so the real big thing is the 16 gigs right here and that's this right here is really dope because the memory is ddr4 but it is 3,733 megahertz, and that's actually good. As a fair comparison, if I was to talk about my laptop, I'm only running 2,666 megahertz. And that does make a difference there, so it's updated virtual memory. And then there's actually another build, and this is the $2,000 version right here with one terabyte of storage and a touch bar, touch ID, and all that, which I, I need to go back up here. So every one of these have touch ID, so that's actually good. Uh, and this actually makes more sense because you have more hard drive space and you know everything else from the $1,800 version, I believe, $1,800 version. So yeah, that makes sense altogether here and this is probably what you're gonna end up getting. So yeah, you're gonna pay $2,000 for something almost as close to the performance of the new AMD uh, laptops from Asus, which actually outperforms most of the big boy laptops, which walk circles around the new MacBook Pro and almost every other laptop that is, and it's only $1,500 for that. But again, no Mac OS, and that's what most people are accustomed to is Mac OS and the exclusive software. So let me go ahead and start off like this. I know guys that a lot of you are Apple fans and that's fine. I, I know a lot of people don't like the Windows OS and a lot of you guys jump into the comment section talking about tech support is better over there and Apple and all this stuff. And I hope it is because holy goodness, did they mess up a lot of their laptops in the past and, and their refresh rate as far as their innovation isn't, hasn't been there for quite a while, but I do feel like with the new Magic Keyboard that they're introducing right back into the MacBook Pro 13 inch that they are doing a really good justice here and then the Touch ID ID, and then the touch bar in itself is actually extremely dope. The addition of the escape key being back is actually good. Those are things that should have been like that for a long time now, but you know, nonetheless, I had to give them props on that. Uh, I do feel that, you know, at $1,300 is not a bad deal if you are looking for bare minimal specs. Uh, therefore, if you are to pay a little bit more, then it doesn't equate to something like the Asus G14 that just came out with the AMD processor. Uh, though you can go to the Tim generation, if you actually look at specs for what they are, if we're talking about real life performance, then the Tim generation isn't that much for the Intel's versus the new AMD Ryzen 7 and 5 for that matter. So, whoa. I mean, you're looking at something that is kind of gimped, but at the same time, it works for you. Also, I know there's a lot of buzz and talk about the new ARM processors that they're going to introduce into the MacBooks, but you know, they went with Intel because of one major reason, which I'm going to expound on in another video, and that is, if you do introduce a new processor, guess what? They gotta rewrite the OS, they gotta rewrite their flagship software, which is the main thing that I gotta applaud Apple on because exclusivity is actually a thing that does hurt 
the community, but at the same time helps a company if they are implementing it right, you know, because if you have Logic Pro X and it works very well with Apple computers or whatnot, then hell, that's fine. I'm I'm okay with that, even though I would love to see that in the Windows world, but I understand exclusivity for what it is, just like I understand that Final Cut Pro would never be on Windows either, but it's optimized for that processor. But what I'm talking about as far as the ARM processor, which is already in your iPhone that you have probably and looking at right now and the iPad, which you're probably looking at right now is there's a huge issue that I have with the iPad altogether. And that is where it's the pro software. Now, if that becomes an issue on their laptops, which isn't an issue with this particular laptop as price point would be the main argument with the new 13 inch. What I do want to expand on as far as the ARM processor and if they do decide to change now is a lot of you guys didn't want to update your OS. You didn't want to update to Catalina because a lot of your software that you have that is old and you don't have any of the backups or anything like that. Well, it will be lost in the sauce because Catalina makes you update everything for it to work. And now that is the biggest issue. Like would those older companies that do not have updates or or access to the arms processor to configure any of their software to work with that processor uh will they be lost in the sauce and and that means that you won't have that compatibility or whatnot i know i'm just making that a mute argument right here uh in case like somebody is talking about the arm processor is going to change the game but that's also the issue with the new ipad pro 11 and and all the ipad pros all together when it comes down to their quote unquote pro software that's not there now again if you think about the ipad os and just to make sure that you guys understand if you talk about the ipad os in itself there is software that's still especially for music production uh, that doesn't take advantage of the new features especially if you're wanting to use the mouse or the trackpad or any even any of the newer gestures uh you're shit out of luck to say the least and to be quite frank about it and i know i curse i apologize but yeah, you're, you're going to be out of luck altogether because, again, if the company, the developers don't update the software, then what is the point of having new features? I know that's not an argument for the new MacBook Pro that we're talking about right now, but it could be in the near future. And that's something that is relevant with the iPad OS right now because we're sitting there looking at a single core performance, multi-core performance, and we're saying that it's better than quote unquote PCs or Windows laptops. But the reality of it is, is that if I go with the Surface, I'm running the same software that I will run on a laptop that I'm using right now. You see where I'm getting at? But if I was to base it off of just spending a little bit more money, you saw how expensive it can really get because giving somebody eight gigs of RAM and an i5 processor with four cores isn't gonna cut the cheese if you're gonna do more multimedia stuff. And then on top of that, no dedicated GPU, you're gonna have to buy an extra GPU just so that you can do video editing and all that stuff. And that is the case with the new MacBook Pro 16 inch, which is the more expensive unit. I don't know. It's just something that you're going to have to deal with if you are a Apple head. I mean, if you like the new MacBook Pros and, and you are MacBook Pro centric in your music production, those are things that you're already dealing with right then and there. Uh, do what I am I excited about it? Yes and no. Is it going to make me go ahead and buy one of those? No. I'm not. I, I'm actually good with my laptop right now. I know I did a review on it and it'll be at the top right of the screen. I know a lot of you guys get tired of that, but the relevance of real life performance versus just base numbers is what the real issue is. It's just like when people say, well, my iPad Pro is faster than your computer. Well, it's faster than the MacBook Air. So what is the whole point of even getting a MacBook Air at this point if you can get an iPad and do everything right then and there? At least you have the Apple Pencil and that's a huge advantage and you have a smart keyboard that is meant for the iPad Pro. And even then you see where Apple in the 2020 version didn't make that more expensive because of all the little things that they did didn't equate to having bigger numbers in pricing and obviously the pandemic going on that wouldn't really be a good look on apple altogether but whatever
But I don't want to draw to conclusions. I want to know what you guys feel like because that is definitely my hot take. And I hope you guys will understand where I'm coming from and understand how things will relate into this world.